Hey folks, in this video I will show how to integrate the Jolt volumes in a real engine and this is the last video of this series. I plan to do uh, a new series and uh, but more about it later. So let's start. Here as you can see I have a falling cube that when it touches, well, when it enters the volume that is right above uh, on the gray box, it changes the color of the falling cube. Let me show the implementation in Blueprint. Uh, here I have, the, this is the falling white cube and um, this is the uh, cube that I created for the past video and I added this custom event that essentially receives the status, the overlap status and changes the material for the cube. Quite straightforward. While on the volume side, which, he, which has this shape and as I told you is right above on the gray box. Uh, what I did was to connect the on component begin overlap and on component end overlap. And what these, uh, this is doing is just calling the event on update overlap status depending on the overlap status of the cube. So very straightforward. But something that I want to show to you is that I am still using the on component begin overlap and on component end overlap that a real engine provides for their own physics engine. So I did not create a new event. I'm just reusing what's there and it works just perfectly. So let's start to talk about the implementation and how things work in, uh, in, uh, in Jolt. Basically uh, I want to say that uh, between a Jolt body and a Jolt volume there is not much difference and indeed when we will create the volume uh, they will be created using the exact same functions. Uh, the only thing that will change is just a small parameter. Both type of bodies are handled in the exact same way. So when two bodies uh, have generate a contact between each other, what it happens is that they also generate forces and they can repel each other or however the dynamics is generated. But when one of these two bodies is a, a, a volume instead, the contacts are still generated and that's where the body and the volume are the same. However, the forces are not generated and the volume can be penetrated. As you can see here, it does not generate any forces. So let me actually show the body creation. As you can see here, I am for the volume, I am still using this function. I have this variable here, is sensor, and what I'm doing is just setting the is sensor on the setting. So very, very simple. And again, Jolt will take care of the, the dynamic that I just explained. Usually inside the game engines, you have two type of events, the events begin overlap and the event be end overlap. These two events are not handled by Jolt directly. Uh, the only thing that Jolt does is uh, emitting events when contacts are generated. So it's up to you, read those contacts and make sure to correctly broadcast those two events. The way to read contacts in Jolt is very easy and what you want to do is to overwrite the contact listener class uh, with uh, your own class and, uh, and add your own implementation that you can see here. And essentially uh, what this uh, function, what this class does is uh, receiving all the events that are generated by Jolt and depending on the two bodies that are uh, generating a contact, do something. In my case, what I'm doing is that if one of the two contacts is a, a volume, essentially it notifies that volume that the contact between a body is generated. Before showing how uh, the volume is implemented, I want to show uh, how to enable the contact listener during the creation of the world. And indeed here I have the uh, object creation, Jolt contact listener, and I am setting uh, via the set contact listener on the physics system. Now, 
All the contacts are, as I said, are generated during the ticking and uh, I receive these contacts via the contact listener. So at the end of the tick, it's necessary for me to take all the volumes and flush them, flush the overlap events. And I do that by calling the function flush overlap events that does two things. The first one is emitting the two events, begin overlap and end overlaps, but also prepare the internal state for the next uh, execution. Actually, let me show the integration because I think that it will help you uh, a lot. As I said, these two array uh, are executing the events for the end overlap and begin overlap. But the most important part is here, despite being super small code. So what I'm doing here is that uh, the, each volume has three array. The overlap ends array, the overlap begin, and the overlaps persisted. Depending on where the, these arrays contains bodies, depending on their state. What I'm doing is flushing uh, all the bodies into the overlap ends because the overlap is completed and there is no reason to keep uh, them inside the volume. Then what I do is adding all the overlaps begin and overlap persisted into the overlap uh, and array. And then I also flush the overlap begin and overlap persisted. On the next tick, when the contact listener will notify this volume that uh, there is a contact, the, uh, the function notify will search if the contact is already contained into the overlap end. And if it is contained, it removes that contact from overlap ends and will migrate that into the overlap persisted. And if the contact is not inside the overlap end, it puts the, uh, the contact inside the overlap begins. So when the function flush overlap events is executed, all the, event, all the bodies that are still inside the overlap ends are all the bodies that did not generate any contact. And so I can safely assume that the overlap and event can be executed and I can flush them and then broadcast the event for all the overlap begins. And that's everything. Thank you very much for following uh, this series. I will start a new one soon. And uh, if you have any question, leave a comment or consider joining Discord that where I will be super happy to help you if you have any problem or I will be also happy to see uh, what you are working on and, uh, and get updates from it. So thank you very much again. See you later. Bye.